Orange. Hello, I'm the Beauty Professor, and you can find my beauty blog at beautyprofessor.net. It has been a while since I've been able to film, and I'm so excited to be back with a very hotly requested video subject, and that is hair care. I often get questions about like, how long it took me to grow it this long, and what special things, if any, do I do to maintain it. I will say up front, I'm fairly low maintenance, but I do have a pretty vast hair care rotation in place. I love to use different shampoos and conditioners just to keep things interesting. So I'll be covering those today, as well as touching briefly on the makeup I'm wearing for this video. And of course, everything will be linked below. So first things first, I got this dress at Anthropology. I picked it up when I was in Dallas, and it's just super comfortable t-shirt dress good price point. I also wanted to mention this bronzy cuff that I received from Hitchcock Madrona in Seattle. I discovered this really cool jewelry store long ago. I have picked up since a few key pieces of jewelry, this being my most recent, and they also have a really cool YouTube channel. So take a peek at them. I'll make sure to link to Hitchcock below, but if you're ever looking for a super unique jewelry, eclectic, innovative, interesting, not something you'd see every day, then it's definitely worth giving them a peek. The quick makeup breakdown. So, and I will have swatches of everything on my blog with pictures of all the products. But I am wearing the Tom Ford Waterproof Foundation Concealer in 6, which is natural. It's my good match for most of the year. Super opaque. Don't need a lot of concealer with this one because of the coverage. But I am using a tiny bit of the Kogendo Moisture Fit Concealer in number 3, which is a good match for my light medium olive skin and I just wear it right in the under eye region it brightens things up without being conspicuous then I am using the Surratt blush it's the Griselle and Ariel it's like a contour and highlighter duo that I've just compiled myself I love these two together just to create nice structure on the face and then also a little bit of glow very subtle super effective to warm up the face further, I'm wearing a bit of the Sisley Leo Crede. Good grief, I don't speak French. That wasn't already abundantly apparent. Um, this is the bronzy illuminating blush, and I used it in the center of my cheeks for a little more warmth. For cheeks, I used a bit more of the Sisley Fido Blush Twist in number one petal. This is how I do that. I dot it onto my cheeks like that and then just tap it in with my ring finger. This is a nice pale pink that still imparts an, a blush color, which I love. You can go crazy with this one without looking like a clown because it is such a soft pink and just easy to apply on the go. Then I am wearing a bit of the Miracle Body Transformer Balm. It's the Tinted cream. I use it on my arms and legs whenever I'm wearing something that might show my limbs because it just gives a soft glow and moisture to the skin. I can't recommend this enough. I'm on tube number two and I've just picked up a backup for both my mom and me. We love it so much, especially with the warmer months. To enhance the high points of my face, I also used a bit of the Clay de Peau Luminizing Face Enhancer in number 16, which is a very kind of pale pearl tone. I use it in tandem with the Surratt to add a little more, more luminosity and I use it especially down the bridge of my nose and in the upper cheekbone corner of my eye region. So soft and finely milled, just a stunning product. Then for eyes, I applied simply the Dior Show Fusion Mono in Meteor, which I picked up last week of been using nonstop. It's a really pretty bronzy taupe and it has great lasting power, no smudging for hours on end. I added a bit more impact in my eye zone with the Gucci Impact Smoky Eye Pencil in black, always in my makeup bag. I just use a bit of it on the interior of my waterline and it stays in place comfortably, wears like a dream. And then I finished my eyes with a copious amount of the Dior Show Pump and Volume Mascara. And this is really cool because you can, of course, get the Do or Show formula on the brush, put it on. When you want more, instead of going up and down like this, you simply pinch to impart more mascara onto the brush. So it keeps you from drying out the mascara and you get exactly what you need. It's genius. The brushes that I used in this process were twofold. I used my Hakuhodo GSN4 brush, which has been a staple for years now. 
and I used that for bronzer and contour and then I used the Surratt Illuminator highlight brush for all my highlighter needs and just the tapered tip is so soft and blends everything remarkably. Finally for lips, I applied a nice dose of the Buxom Matte Lip Color in White Russian. My mom and I recently both picked this up at Sephora and my gosh, I love it so much. I'll put official swatches of course on the blog, but it looks like this. I hope it's picking up. It's a decently pigmented, great opacity, kind of peachy pink nude, totally in my lip zone. And that's what I have on with a bit of the Tatcha Twilight Cherry Blossom Lip Liner to start. I did put that on first. It looks like that just to define the lips. And then I finished with the Kevin Aquan Molten Lip Color in Cyber Opal, which I'll have swatches of too, just for kind of a very shiny, soft nude lip. If you're into a peachy pink opaque lip, another great discovery is this Make Matte Lipstick. I will swatch that as well on film. It's called Tulipa. I picked this up at $45.10 in Dallas. I just can't get enough of colors like this. This is a little brighter and poppier than the White Russian, but equally lovely. Kind of a good statement lip that's still not overdone. Finally, I finished my look with a touch of the Gucci Satin Matte Powder Foundation. Been a staple since I purchased it a couple of months ago. It has decent opacity, evens out the skin, and just makes everything look really airbrushed. <laughs> all right, all that being said, I know you came here to watch a hair care video, so I am excited to just jump right in with the hair care products that I use frequently that I find just keep my hair in good shape. So off the top, the questions I always get are who cuts your hair and who colors your hair? And just to clear that up initially, my mom cuts my hair and she's been the only one who has ever cut it. She's very gifted with a pair of scissors and she cuts my husband's hair, my brother's hair, my dad's hair, other people in her life's hair. She's just really good, but she is conservative. I've had long hair for a lot of my life and she just gives me a couple trims a year and it's pretty easy and quick. She just did it last week when we were in Dallas and it took like three minutes for her to cut the ends and keep them nice and bouncy. And second question about coloring, I don't color my hair. I live at the beach, I'm outside and I shoot a lot outside in natural sunlight on Beauty Professor and my hair is naturally lightened from the sun. So it's low maintenance in that regard and I'm sure one day down the line I'll need to color my hair and of course I'll be frank about that when it happens. But for the time being, this is my completely natural color. It hasn't been touched by hair color and that's the answer to that. On to the products. I'm a big fan of supplements and I want to say very explicitly I'm not a doctor, I'm not intending to prescribe medical advice, I can only tell you what has worked for me and I am just but one person so it may or may not work for you of course consult your physician before you take any vitamins or supplements whatsoever. For me I'm a big believer in vitamin B and so I take this Thorn Basic B Complex, buy it every couple months and it's great. It gives you all the B you need in your hair, feeds off of B. So I embrace that principle of nourishing from the inside out. I know I need B to continue to feed my hair, and so I take a good B complex. Also, I take a B12 active in cherry flavor. I chew it up, and that's good for energy and also, of course, nourishes my hair. And then I do take the Vital Proteins Collagen Peptides. It's a great way of feeding your skin, your nails, and your hair, and I just mix it into either kefir in the morning. You can mix it into milk or coffee or even water or a shake. So it gives you some great nutrients that also end up fortifying your hair. For shampoo, I use the John Frieda Sheer Blonde Go Blonder, which despite sounding like there's hair color in this, it just has natural lemon and chamomile. There is no ammonia or peroxide in it, so it's not really doing anything to lift color or lighten in the traditional sense certainly nothing bleaching going on, but I find that it just illuminates the highlights in my hair and I pick this up once a month. Also, there's a newer John Frieda, Sheer Blonde Brilliantly Brighter, which 
is illuminating. It's intended to actually add like a glossy sheen to the hair and I've been trying that for the last couple of weeks and I'm really pleased with it as well. I can't speak to the express differences between these two but I would say this is kind of like an everyday one for me and this one is a once in a while add some extra shine version of a shampoo. Of course these have coordinating conditioners which I have in my shower as well. Then for deep cleaning, I've been loving the Clear It Up Detox Shampoo. It's by Colorproof. I guess it's technically for color, colored hair, but it can be used on natural or virgin hair as well. And it's sulfate-free, gluten-free, vegan, salt-free, and just great ingredients. I use it to kind of clarify my hair after I've been traveling, if I've been in different states with different water and I just need to reset my hair, I use this. I use this about once a week and since I'm on a big rotation, it's nice to kind of freshen up my hair and start, start with a clean slate every few days. So this is a great one and it smells amazing. Then there is the Gloss Modern High Gloss Shampoo and Conditioner. I have loved this duo for, gosh, well over three years, maybe three and a half years and I'm on like my third version of this. So the shampoo and the conditioner have the most premium ingredient one could conceptualize. Smells so luxurious like coconut and just amazing like a tropical island getaway. As the moniker might imply, it fights frizz, it adds great deep glossy shine to the hair. These two are designed to work together, so shampoo and then condition, and then there's also a beautiful hair mask and serum that I also integrate into my routine from time to time. Sulfate free, sodium chloride free, paraben free, as I said, exceptional ingredients list, and I just, I know this company well, they're local to where I live, and I know how serious they are about crafting hair care that is just at the top of its game. Additionally, there's the Garnier Fructis. This is Sleek and Shine Zero. It's got zero silicone, which I like. I sometimes feel like silicone breaks me out. Since my hair is close to my face, that can happen. So I like the fact that this one is, you know, at a great price point. It works with frizzy and fine hair. Mine's not either, but it does add like sleek shine to my hair. And because it's clear and it's pretty minimalist on the ingredients, I find that it's a good clarifying shampoo for me as well. Before I go on to treatments and conditioners and sprays, I want to mention the Dyson Supersonic Hair Dryer. I picked this up at the most recent Sephora VIB sale and I'm so glad I did. This one came with this limited edition case so you can keep it inside. It holds everything you need. So that's what the case looks like, but more often than not, this is just hanging on my hook in the bathroom. I have contemplated getting this dryer for the last year and finally after many readers and subscribers were like, Rachel, what do you think, what do you think, I decided I would just buy it and make sure to talk about it. All I can say is I'm in no way disappointed. This hair dryer is very light, it's weighty enough to feel like it's well crafted but not heavy in an inordinate fashion. It also is so quiet, I wish I could plug it in and show you right now but I'm telling you it's white compared to all the hair dryers I have experienced and, and use regularly. It has three settings for power as well as heat and then it also has a cool button you just press it one time you don't have to hold it down and it creates nice cold air. My husband and I were joking that when it's hot we could just plug this in and use it as a personal fan <laughs> because you could. It, it's exceptional in every way of zero regrets about having purchased this. I know I'll be buying one for my mom probably for the next special holiday. I know she'll love it. She dries her hair even more than I do. Um, I tend to go to bed with my hair wet and wake up with it half dry and then use a hair dryer to finish it out because I'm just too lazy to do the whole thing. But I have noticed that this tends to dry my hair in about half the time. I've been experimenting. I am just completely over the moon for this. It's not hype. It's truly an exceptional product. For hair brushes, I have two that I use the most frequently. The first is this Tangle Teaser. I love the fact that this particular Tangle Teaser has a handle. Most of them are just like this. And you really gotta get in there. I feel like I'm brushing a My Little Pony. <laughs> this one has a handle, so when I'm brushing up my hair wet or dry, it really gets in there. I do suffer from tangles. My hair gets tangled underneath when a purse is on my shoulder or the wind. So that's one of the biggest issues I combat. And this always gets out all the tangles. It does it without breaking the hair or causing too much discomfort. So I can't say enough good things about this brush. Love it. Also, I have the Mason Pearson. This is the pocket brush. 
It's tiny, it's always in my purse because it is so diminutive, but it adds great shine to the hair, it detangles, and while the br bristles don't get out all my tangles, if I was severely tangled the same way the tangle teaser would, it's great for midday touch-ups, and like I said, it's always in my purse for that reason. It's light, but so well-crafted, and as you know, or may know, Mason Pearson has just an excellent reputation in the hairbrush world top it was definitely an investment for me but once again i bought this last year and use it every single day so totally worth it in terms of conditioners i know i mentioned the gloss mood air and conditioner which i use also i have conditioners that are like the mate to products like this and this but I also have some that kind of give a little extra oomph to the process. One is the DP Hue Color Boosting Gloss. This is in Golden Blonde. It's a deep conditioner. It adds manageability to my hair. And once again, no peroxide, no ammonia. It's not dyeing your hair, but it does heighten the natural color in your hair and make it a little more pronounced and visible or enhancing the existing color in your hair. So this is a beautiful product and I do like the whole DP Hue line. The shampoo, conditioner, and apple cider vinegar rinse are all great for tending to one's tresses. Also, there's the Edward Best Hair Hero. I've used this for years and if you know anything about Edward Best, you know this man has gorgeous hair. He created this to be a part of one's hair care routine. It's a cream used for all purposes. You can use it to detangle, to set the hair, to reset a style, to add conditioning after a shower. It just, it's kind of a jack of all trades, very utilitarian and you can use it even pre-blow dry to amplify things. It's lovely in so many ways. Then there is the Miriam Cavedo Sublime Gold Gold Mask. I was traveling last month, my hair had gone through a lot. Plain air, different water, d hotel shampoos, because sometimes I don't wanna pack full shampoos and I'm too lazy to create travel ones, so I just use what's in the hotel. At any rate, my hair needed some serious tending to. I had received this, I was just getting to know about the line, and I was like, oh my gosh, where has this been all my life? It's a very luxurious kind of mask conditioner. You put it on the ends of your hair in the shower, I let it sit for a few minutes while I'm shaving, and rinse out, my hair just feels like silk, and it's not weighed down, it looks shiny. This is some just brilliant stuff. I can't say enough good things about it. I still need to continue to try other products from this line, but in the meanwhile, this has been a hero product for me. For sprays, I don't really do much to my hair in terms of style. I put it in a braid, I pull it half up. There's a lot of buns going on over here. I'm not using like hairspray or gel. My hair is naturally straight and I don't really do much to alter that. So with that being said, I just look for things that keep my hair having plenty of movement and shine and no flyaways. A few products that help me with that are the R Co Foil, which is frizz and static control spray. And so it does just that. It reduces the static and frizz. Like today, it's super windy, hot Santa Ana winds. I would use this to kind of tame some of that static that's inherently in my hair. I also really like the Orlando Pita Play Flashlight Shine Boosting Spray. This makes your hair feel so soft, it's so shiny, and I just spray a little bit all over my dry hair and you can like go out at night and just feel like your light hair is catching the light. Then two favorite products from Orbe, Reflecting Spray and the Apre Beach Wave and Shine Spray. So this one's a traditional shine spray. It would be something I put on after my hair is dry and I can just spray it all over it, get some extra luminosity, make sure hair just look really incandescent. So that's a great one and it smells incredible. Equally fragrant in the best possible way is the Apre Beach. This is a travel size so it's often it goes with me when I travel. It adds wave, so it kind of adds some texture to your hair. When my hair is feeling kind of flat, which can definitely happen, then I might flip my hair upside down and then spray this all over and it also adds some shine so it's a great kind of has a duality to it that makes it just excellent to always have in my travel toiletries bag finally for scent I love the Byredo Mojave Ghost hair perfume I've completely used an entire bottle of Mojave Ghost that really happens for me with perfume so that's how much I love it as a scent and I bought this coordinating hair perfume it's very light, you just kind of mist it on and it gives you that great kind of low-key subtle aroma that is right aligned in tandem with the fragrance you might be wearing that day. Also, I've been really intrigued with the Maison Francis Cartagen Hair Mist and this is Amorous. 
it's fresh, it's mysterious, it's kind of moody, it's great for evening, and you just mist it all over your hair. So if you don't really want to bathe yourself in perfume or you're looking for something to heighten the effects of that perfume, then this would be the way to go. And just thought the bottle just so lovely. And that essentially comprises my hair care routine. As I said before, I do wash my hair in the evening. I wash it basically every other day. And I know that that sounds like a lot for some people or maybe not enough for others. I kind of feel like hair washing is really personal. You kind of do it as you as needed. For me, I like an every other day routine. And so I wash and condition every other day. I often just lightly brush when I get out of the shower and go to bed with it wet. And then in the morning, it's mostly dry as, as I mentioned. And then I just use a dryer if I need to before I'm off to go lecture and get the rest of the moisture out. If I'm home in the day, if I'm working from home, I might just let it completely air dry. So I know that's something that I do regularly. Also, I'm a big fan of a softer pillowcase, either one made of silk, which I'll link to below. I also like the Illuminage pillowcase, which I use a lot. I kind of alternate that with my silk one. And both of those really help to minimize breakage and are also better for the skin. All in all, I, I hope that you found this video interesting and hopefully answering the questions you may have had and I would love to know which hair care you use and love and find success with please share it in the comments box below I look forward to creating new content for you in the coming days thank you for hanging in there with me as always I like to get Jethro in a video for one second this little guy is getting a bath tonight but in the meanwhile I just woke him out of a nap he is the nappingest dog and so sweet loving and cute I hope you enjoy seeing his little face right now. Don't forget to visit me at my beauty blog, Beauty Professor, which can be found at beautyprofessor.net. Take care.